Davis. An MRI yesterday revealed a re-aggravation of the right Achilles injury for the brow. He'll take two to three weeks off, then be re-evaluated. Lakers did say they'll be conservative with their big man return. So, Broussard, I'll start with you. Is LeBron up to the challenge of carrying the Lakers with AD being sidelined? Well, let's go with the timeline you talked about. Uh, if he's out until the All-Star break, that's nine games. The schedule's not too tough. I mean, they do have Brooklyn. They do have Utah, Portland, Phoenix. But it's not an unmanageable schedule. And remember, they're 4-1 and one right now without AD. So if you're asking me, can LeBron keep them from falling from the second seed where they are right now in the West to the fifth or sixth seed? Sure. I, I have no doubt that LeBron can carry that load. And I don't think he's going to have to go 40 minutes a night. I wouldn't do that. If I'm the Lakers, I keep him around 36 to 34 minutes a night. I, I wouldn't overburden LeBron during this stretch. But if you're asking me, can the Lakers win the title or even get to the finals without a healthy AD who is at the top of his game, I would say no way. Uh, that is too much to ask of LeBron James. Even as LeBron has been punching out father time every year, I, I don't see him being able to carry this Lakers team without another superstar. Not AD playing like a star, but AD playing like another superstar. I don't see, I would take the Clippers over the Lakers in this scenario. Uh, Utah, I'm still not sold on as far as the playoffs. But I would take Brooklyn over the Lakers in that scenario and maybe even Philly if AD can't be himself. So LeBron can, you know, hold down the fort for a few weeks while AD's gone, but he's going to need AD to be at his absolute best for them to win the championship. Chris, I'm, I'm glad that you clarified right there because one of the questions was, can he do it in the regular season? Yes, I agree. But when it comes to the postseason in LeBron James, I agree. This is going to be a, a, a tough carry for him. Uh, why do you say that? In the NBA now, you win with star power. If we hadn't noticed what Brooklyn's doing over there, as you brought out, uh, arguably the biggest offensive trio that we have ever seen play the game of basketball that's what's going on over there in brooklyn the clippers are much improved they're back to their normalcy they're not in the national media night in and night out they're just kind of going out uh, and playing good basketball right now so you'd be asking too much of a load of lebron james when you think about anthony davis what does he do well greg what does he do well chris it's not just his scoring not just his rebounding Anthony Davis, with his athleticism, covers so much ground defensively. And on the offensive end, he literally spreads you thin. You've got to play from rim to three-point line. He's arguably the best finisher in basketball. He can step back, hit the deep three. He can roll to the rim. He can short roll you. He can post up a smaller mismatch. And in the NBA Finals, I believe that Anthony Davis really, really came into his own. So can LeBron James make it through the playoffs with that? Anthony Davis as dynamic as he was I agree Chris I do not think that he can do it with the firepower and the way guys have loaded up in the NBA today yeah I agree with both of you but I think we we sometimes forget yes LeBron is getting older but this is what he has always done he's always had to bear the brunt carry the load if you will this is how he's been built he's built for this in moments like this. However, in saying that, I do agree with you guys as far as the playoffs, but this is why they acquired uh, Dennis Schroeder, uh, Montrez Harrell, these guys who you got Montrez Harrell coming off the sixth man of the year award and the runner up being Dennis Schroeder. And, and you got these guys, not just because of what they do coming off the bench. Obviously, Schroeder's in a starting position playing more minutes. You're asking him to do something that uh, alongside players that he's never played with before at this caliber when a LeBron and an AD. But these guys are here configured on this roster to step up in cases just like this. 
So for the regular season, it's not even so much about LeBron carrying the load. It's can he make sure that these guys step up to the playing ability that is needed for them to not slip in, in this stat running race uh, when you look at the NBA statistics and standings. So I, I'm not concerned about LeBron. LeBron, at his age, guys like LeBron and Tom Brady and these type of caliber players, elite mindset players, they always find a way to get it done. So I truly believe in LeBron, but it's more about his leadership. And what can he do to provide the guys around him to play at a higher level? That's what's most important. That's what's going to help him carry this load. Not about the amount of minutes that he put, puts in or has to play or the amount of points that he has to score. It's not just solely about those things. And Ryan, to your point about Anthony Davis and what he brings, it's the defensive mentality. When we, when we talked about this team earlier in the season, and they were slipping defensively, who, who was that catalyst to get them back on track? It was Anthony Davis. And so, yes, offensively, AD. and his numbers are down, but a AD, but when you look at his numbers, they're down a little bit this year, but defensively is where he is the guy that makes this thing work for this Lakers team. Here's another thing about this little stretch run without AD. This could solidify LeBron as the true front runner for the MVP race. I have him number one on my ballot right now. I know it's early. I've got him slightly ahead of Joel Embiid, who's been missing a lot of games, or at least six games of the 27, 28 that Philly's played. Uh, if LeBron can lead the uh, Lakers to six and three, even, but especially seven and two or better during these nine games without AD. I think that would place him firmly at the top of the MVP race, which, look, I know it's all about championships for LeBron, but he's a human being. He would love to win an MVP award in his 18th season, which no players really come close to doing. So that'd be another feather in his cap. But if the Lakers go, say, four and five and really struggle during this stretch and it's clear that LeBron can't carry them without AD – then that would bring him back to the pack, maybe put in bead, or I expect Nikola Jokic to make a nice run at this as Denver starts to win more games. So I think that would bring LeBron back to the pack and could hurt his chances of winning his fifth MVP award. Ryan? See, Chris, I, I agree, but I see an even bigger urgency right now. If, if I'm Rob Palink in that Lakers front office, what do you have to do? You have to get into the trade market. You've got to be in the buyout market. You've got to find your next Dwight Howard. This, this team is not good defensively. Last year, you may rival the Lakers team last year with some of the greatest Lakers defense in history. As you heard me, some of the greatest Lakers defense in history. If they, if they can't defend and you've got to make LeBron James outscore you at his age, that's not how he wants to play. And even with AD, I'm going to tell you one thing. The Lakers better find a way to play some defense. Nikola Jokic is serious. If somehow, as you brought up, Chris, Joel Embiid is in the playoffs, they don't have anybody to guard him, okay? And then if you got the firepower of the Nets, and it's not just that you can't score with them, it's the paint. If the Nets are having a field day in the Lakers paint, yo, it's a problem. There's no Big E. There's no Howard in there. In there. I, I play with Marcus Saul, former defensive player of the year. But the thing about Marcus Saul, Marcus Saul doesn't have the same legs, and he was never a great shot blocker he was more from an intelligent standpoint and Trez has improved defensively but he's not a stopper so they still need something else even with Anthony Davis but I I agree Chris we're gonna touch on it a little later in the show this could very well set up LeBron James for MVP you're just waiting for that moment where you can get behind and be like yo yo he's MVP because of this and if LeBron James gets busy now with no AD we can yo look at what he did without Anthony Davis and LeBron LeBron James is very aware, Greg. He's very aware of it. I, listen, I played against LeBron, quite arguably the most aware athlete I've ever played against. He knew every scout report, every player, every tendency. He knew, listen, he knew a young Ryan Hollins, man. He was on there screaming out, hey, man, hey, hey, <laughs> keep him away from the rim. I'm like, dog, didn't nobody even know Ryan Hollins at that time. LeBron is like, yo, he's a right-hand driver. Like, what? Like, yo, I'm not on the scout report, bro. Stop hating. <laughs> <laughs> I love the energy, Ryan. All right, we will get back to this later.